so uh, as we're just saying, they, there is no intermediate uh, height curb for testing. It's just for training, just the low curb and the high curb. So we go from the five centimeters up to the 15 centimeters. So for testing purposes, uh, over to you, Cher. Okay. So for testing, uh, for the high curb, it's again, still your 1.5 meters. Now for the 15 centimeters, uh, most people I've known that have been able to do this have not been able to do it from this distance. They're gonna back up to do that. Um, Amir, is this a curb you would like to try? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm spotter on, what would you like to do? Okay. Take your time. Yeah, no, <laughs> just paid by the hour. Yep. All right, give it a go. <laughs> so just for, okay, yeah, never mind. Yep. So I let go just to demonstrate that she did that herself, not because I'm a poor spotter, that's yeah. unrelated. So, so for the wheelchair skills test, she didn't get it on the first attempt, so she can't get a level three, but she did get it on the second attempt, so that would be considered a pass, but with room for improvement. If she had done the same thing on the second attempt that she did on the first attempt, she would have had a partial pass because she got a good approach, a good caster pop, she just didn't get the rear wheels up. So there's a couple of ways that one can get a partial pass there. <laughs> A couple of other ways you can get a partial pass would be if she declined to attempt this, says, I'm pretty sure I can't do that, but I can do this one. So if she was successful and did a good job of getting up the 10 centimeter curb, she could get a partial pass for that. And the other way would be if she was able to direct the tester in how to do a caregiver assisted uh, technique said, without yeah. the caregiver or the tester doing anything on their own. So there's a, a few subtleties there to be able to advance your score through training yeah and Good. i think also too when we get to the high level skills if if you're working with a client and they're like you know what i was getting these all the time and i i know i can do this there is a certain importance to letting them try a second time it gives you information um, as well as gives them uh, sort of the, the confidence and interest to keep coming back having said that if someone doesn't get this in a testing situation on the first time I can tell you they're not doing that in in normal outdoor environments because um, it's it's so much more stressful when people are watching and there's traffic and and all those other um, contextual interference issues. Uh, so it just also helps you realize where they are as far as their skill development. Yeah. So let's just let's, yes, please. Uh, can we save the question just until after we finish the recording for the this part? Uh, yes, thank we you. can. Can we just maybe move on and show some testing? Yeah. Let's assume that uh, Amira hadn't made it up from the first attempt or, or on both attempts. And <laughs> so, we're moving, so we're moving to, to this intermediate level. Whenever you're ready. Yep. Success, yep. Yeah, so that, that's a good example of, uh, of how just by lowering the, that the progression in terms of the height and how that's important. Could you maybe demonstrate uh, just the segmentation share if, if mm -hmm. uh, Amir hadn't been able to get the rear wheels up, but had got uh, the first two parts, correct? How would you do? Yeah, so when lap? we think of our um, coast pop lean, um, pop is, is where we start. Uh, so I would just say, okay, Amir, I'd like you to just pop up and down uh, 10 times and get just a single pop each time and get it, try and shoot for exactly the right height. Okay, we'll pretend she did 10 because I'm bored. Um, and now what we do is we build onto that. And so we're gonna add the coast. Now I don't want her to try and get up the curb. I really just want her to get that perfect amount of, of pop and the right amount at the right time. Okay, so whenever you're ready. Great. Again. Good, so we do this probably five times and you can make it as a game. You have to do it five times successfully. If you get a caster slap or, or under pop, then you have to go back to zero. And so once you've got that, it's, it's a way to kind of keep people engaged. And then after they've done uh, several times, you say, okay, now this time I just want you to lean, okay? Don't worry about getting up there. Just add lean to that coast pop lean. And thank you. Um, so, as long as you've got 
that, that speed and the pop um, pitch at the right amount, as soon as you add lane, the people just go right up. You, you don't have to even think about it. Um, but it's again, breaking it down to those components and getting the foundation built on the coast and the pop to be just right as far as timing and, and caster height. And then the last thing we want to do with, with the ascending the high curve is demonstrate the caregiver approach. Uh, yeah. Uh, so with the caregiver, uh, the main thing to consider um, is that often um, they can't see the person's feet. Uh, so it's just getting that right. So again, you're going to explain to the person what you're doing because you're going to pitch them back quite a bit farther than what they're probably used to in every day. Um, if there's a rigidizing bar, you can use that. If there's a um, an anti-tipper flipped up, you can use that um, and whatever part of the chair. So I'm going to tip you back. I want to lean back. Okay. And so once all four wheels are up there, then I'm going to have her lean forward and that's going to put the weight up the curb already, if she can lean forward. And then I'm just going to roll. And then once she's up, she can sit up. Now I use the rigidizing bar there. If she has a soft upholstery back, don't use your knee into people's spines. Um, but if not, then you can push on that if, if that's helpful. Anything you want to add? No, that's, that's great. Thank you. Um, so maybe we'll stop there and take any questions on the ascent of, of curves. Sure. So there is one question, which is, what is the maximum height of the barrier which is used in um, training or for learning? 15 centimeters. In earlier versions, uh, way earlier versions, I think like 3.2 or so, we had seven inches instead of six inches, but six inches and 15 centimeters is uh, more typical for curb height, at least in Canada. And that's, yeah, that's exactly the idea is that this is transferable to our built environment. If you're living somewhere that has uh, higher curbs, then that might change your, your top training heights. So can, 